peace be with you. My name is Rodolfo Martin Vitancol, a Gemini. I am always asked, what is Gemini? The word Gemini comes from Jesus' mission. J from the first two letters of Jesus and my from the first two letters of mission. As a Gemini, I am not a Christian. My faith is Jesus and Jesus is not a religion. He is life. Where there is life, there is Jesus. Where there is Jesus, there is life. And when there is no life, there is Jesus to bring life. As a Gemini, my teacher is not Paul, the fake apostle of the Christians who destroyed Jesus by turning his mission into a most lucrative money-making business called church, where leaders, believers, or deliver message of salvation to their followers in exchange for their money through lifetime tithes and donations. My teacher is not Paul. My teacher is Jesus. As a Gemini, my basis of faith is not the entire Christian Bible, a combination of all the opposing teachings of Yahweh, Paul, and Jesus, making Christianity the most confusing religion in the world. The basis of my faith is not the whole Bible. The basis of my faith is the gospel alone. The only word of God in the entire Christian Bible. Lastly, as a Jemai, my God is not Yahweh, whom others also call Jehovah, that wrong and evil God there in the Old Testament, and the one being worshipped by all the Christians up to now. My God is not Yahweh. My God is Abba, the Father of Jesus, who is not the same person as Yahweh. In this video, I will present to you, is Jesus Yahweh, whom others also call Jehovah, The God of the Old Testament has seven names. Y-H-W-H, Adonai, El, Elohim, Shaddai, Zevaot, and A. The first name of the God of the Old Testament is y h W H Y H W H is the Hebrew name of God in the Old Testament. It is known as the Tetragrammaton. It is translated in English as I am who I am or I will be what I will be. It is the name revealed by Yahweh to Moses in the book of Exodus. Exodus 3, 14-15 God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is my name forever. The name you shall call me 
from generation to generation. The second name of the God of the Old Testament is Adonai. The name YHWH was regarded by the Jews as too sacred to be uttered. If they want to vocalize the name of God during the synagogue ritual, they must not use YHWH. W H, but another word, and that another word is Adonai, which means my Lord. Adonai is Kyrios in Greek. Kyrios is the name you will meet in the Septuagint. What is Septuagint? Septuagint is the Greek version of the Hebrew scriptures. The third name of the God of the Old Testament is El. El is not actually a name. It is an ancient Semitic title which means God. It could refer to many gods. However, when used as the name of God in the Old Testament, El means the God. The fourth name of the God of the Old Testament is Elohim. If El is God in singular form, Elohim is the plural. However, if you will apply Elohim to Yahweh, it is to be understood in the singular sense, not plural. The fifth name of the God of the Old Testament is Shaddai. Shaddai means Almighty. El Shaddai means God Almighty. The sixth name of the God of the Old Testament is Zebaot. Zebaot means the God of the armies of Israel, which may be found in 1 Samuel 17.45. David said to the Philistine, You come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. The seventh name of the God of the Old Testament is Eye. Eye is a Hebrew word which means I am, or I was, or I will be. How did they arrive at Yahweh as the name of the God of the Old Testament? The name Yahweh is the biblical pronunciation of the tetragrammaton YHWH. How did others arrive at Jehovah as the name of the God of the Old Testament? Jehovah is the Latinized version of the Hebrew Yahweh. Jehovah and Yahweh are synonymous. As almost all Christians call the God of the Old Testament Yahweh, there are those who prefer to call him Jehovah. The religion 
that uses Jehovah as the name of the God of the Old Testament is Jehovah's Witnesses. They believe that God has only one distinctive name, and that is Jehovah. To them, the name Jehovah means He causes to become. Who is Abba? Abba is not a name. It is an Aramaic word for father as used by Jesus. Mark 14, 36 Jesus said, Abba, Father, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. There are three points I want to make in this video presentation. First point. In this video presentation, although the names Yahweh and Jehovah are synonymous, I will use more often the name Jehovah than Yahweh. Why? This video is mainly addressed to those people who believe that Jesus is Yahweh, and they are mostly those who use Jehovah as the name of God in the Old Testament. Second point, although Abba is not a name, but the Aramaic word for father, in this video presentation, I will use Abba as the name of the father of Jesus. Third point, in this video presentation, there are two opposing sides. On one side are those who believe Jesus is Jehovah. And on the other side are those who believe Jesus is not Jehovah. For those who believe Jesus is Jehovah, I was able to produce 22 proofs that Jesus is Jehovah. On the other hand, for those who believe Jesus is not Jehovah, I was able to come up with 50 proofs that Jesus is not Jehovah. Each proof is supported with biblical verses. However, to save on recording time, I have decided not to include any more in my reading the biblical text. To do so would make this video last for more than two hours. Without my reading the supporting biblical texts, I was able to shorten this video to just more or less an hour. If you want the complete text, you may avail of the ebook copy of this presentation. It is available in major online bookstores. All the links are provided in the description box. Twenty-two. Biblical proofs that Jesus is Jehovah. Proof number one. As prophesied, Jesus is to be called Emmanuel. Emmanuel 
means Jehovah with us. Therefore, by His name alone, Jesus is clearly Jehovah. He is Jehovah in the flesh. He is Jehovah incarnate. Proof number two. Jesus' name in Hebrew is Yeshua, which means to deliver or to rescue. However, his original Hebrew name is not Yeshua, but Yehoshua or Joshua in English, which means Jehovah is salvation. Like Emmanuel, the meaning of Jesus' name truly indicates he is Jehovah. He is Jehovah incarnate. Proof number three. In the gospel, a messenger is sent to prepare the way of the Lord. This statement was taken from the book of Isaiah. The Lord, whose way is to be prepared, that Isaiah is referring to, is Jehovah. Therefore, Jesus is Jehovah in the flesh. He is Jehovah incarnate. Proof number four. In the Old Testament, it is Jehovah who gave the Sabbath law. Only Jehovah can enhance the meaning of the Sabbath, no other else. Therefore, when Jesus gives deeper meaning to the Sabbath law, he is clearly acting in the person of Jehovah. Indeed, Jesus is Jehovah in the flesh. He is Jehovah incarnate. Proof number five. In the Old Testament, Jehovah made the natural world. It is He alone who can control it. Therefore, when Jesus stops the storm, He is clearly acting in the person of Jehovah. Indeed, Jehovah, Jesus, is Jehovah. He is Jehovah incarnate. Proof number six. In the Old Testament, only Jehovah alone can walk on water. Therefore, when Jesus walks on water, he is clearly acting in the person of Jehovah. Indeed, Jesus is Jehovah. He is Jehovah incarnate. Proof number seven. In the Old Testament, I am He is the name of Jehovah. Therefore, each time Jesus says, I am He, He is clearly equating Himself with Jehovah. Therefore, Jesus is Jehovah. He is Jehovah incarnate. Proof number eight. 
according to Jehovah. No one can see his face in his full glory and live. This explains why whenever Jesus identifies himself as I am he or does miracles, the Jews tremble with fear like they have seen God. The truth is, it is really Jehovah that the Jews did see in the gospel. Indeed, Jesus is Jehovah. He is Jehovah incarnate. Ruth number nine. In the Old Testament, only Jehovah has the power to forgive sins. Therefore, whenever Jesus forgives sins, he is clearly acting in the person of Jehovah. Indeed, Jesus is Jehovah. He is Jehovah incarnate. Proof number 10. In the Old Testament, Jehovah is the judge at the last day. Therefore, when Jesus says he will judge the living and the dead at the last day, he is clearly identifying himself as Jehovah. Indeed, Jesus is Jehovah. He is Jehovah in the flesh. Proof number 11. In the Old Testament, the only God to be worshipped is Jehovah. For allowing himself to be worshipped, Jesus is clearly identifying himself as Jehovah. Indeed, Jesus is Jehovah. He is Jehovah incarnate. Proof number 12. In the Old Testament, God will search for those who are lost. Therefore, when Jesus says, the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost, he is clearly identifying himself as Jehovah. Indeed, Jesus is Jehovah. He is Jehovah incarnate. Proof number 13. In John 1, 1-3, it is written, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It directly shows that Jesus is God, and that God is Jehovah. Therefore, Jesus is Jehovah. He is Jehovah in the flesh. Proof number 14. In the Old Testament, Jehovah alone created all things. Therefore, when Jesus is being described as the creator of all things, he is no other than Jehovah himself. Indeed, Jesus is Jehovah. He is Jehovah in the flesh. Proof number 15. In the Old Testament, Jehovah's words endure forever. <coughs> Therefore, 
when Jesus says his words will never pass away, he is clearly identifying himself as Jehovah. Indeed, Jesus is Jehovah. He is Jehovah incarnate. Proof number 16. In the Old Testament, Jehovah is the good shepherd. Therefore, when Jesus says he is the good shepherd, he is clearly equating himself with Jehovah. Indeed, Jesus is Jehovah. He is Jehovah incarnate. Proof number 17. In the Old Testament, Jehovah is the light. Therefore, when Jesus says he is the light, he is clearly equating himself with Jehovah. Indeed, Jesus is Jehovah. He is Jehovah incarnate. Proof number 18. In the Old Testament, Jehovah is the rock. When Jesus says he is the rock, he is clearly equating himself with Jehovah. Indeed, Jesus is Jehovah. He is Jehovah in the flesh. Proof number 19. In the Old Testament, Jehovah is the bridegroom. Therefore, when Jesus says he is the bridegroom, he is clearly equating himself with Jehovah. Indeed, Jesus is Jehovah. He is Jehovah in the flesh. Proof number 20. In the Old Testament, Jehovah is the sower. Therefore, when Jesus says he is the sower, he is clearly equating himself with Jehovah. Indeed, Jesus is Jehovah. He is Jehovah incarnate. Proof number 21. In the Old Testament, Jehovah is the king of the Jews. Therefore, when Jesus claims to be the king of the Jews, he is clearly equating himself with Jehovah. Indeed, Jesus is Jehovah, Jehovah in the flesh. Last, proof number 22. The followers of Jehovah believe Jehovah is the same person as Abba, the father of Jesus. Therefore, whenever Jesus equates himself with Abba, his father, in effect, he is also equating himself with Jehovah. Since Jehovah is also Abba, indeed, Jesus is Jehovah, Jehovah in the flesh. Biblical proofs Then Jesus it's not Jehovah. Proof number one. Jesus was rejected by the Jews for equating himself with Jehovah. If Jesus were Jehovah, then it was Jehovah that was rejected by the Jews. And for that reason, 
Jehovah did not profit anything at all from his incarnating in Jesus. In other words, Jehovah was a complete failure as the Messiah of his very own chosen people. Therefore, Jesus is not and cannot be Jehovah incarnate. Proof number two. Jesus was taken up into heaven and he sat at the right hand of God. If Jesus were Jehovah, Jehovah would then be sitting at the right hand of another God higher than him. But in the Old Testament, Jehovah is alone as the God Almighty. Indeed, Jesus is not and cannot be Jehovah in the flesh. Proof number three. Jesus was forsaken by God. If Jesus were Jehovah, Jehovah, the God in heaven, forsook himself as Jehovah, the incarnate on earth. That would not make any sense at all. I repeat, Jesus was forsaken by God. If Jesus were Jehovah, Jehovah the God in heaven forsook himself as Jehovah the incarnate on earth. Indeed, Jesus is not and cannot be Jehovah in the flesh. Proof number four. The Jehovah of the Old Testament promised to send a prophet in the likes of Moses. But in the gospel, it is not a prophet that was sent, but rather the only begotten Son of God. But Jehovah has no begotten Son. The Son that was sent was the Son of Abba, the Father of Jesus. Indeed, Jesus is not and cannot be Jehovah in the flesh. Proof number five. Jesus introduced his God. His God is Abba, his Father in heaven. He said Abba is the one and only true God and no other else. Therefore, Jesus is not and cannot be Jehovah incarnate. Proof number six. Right before the presence of the Jews, Jesus vehemently condemns their father as the devil, a murderer, and a liar. Who is the father of the Jews? Jehovah. Therefore, Jesus is not and cannot be Jehovah in the flesh. Proof number seven. Jesus contradicts Moses. Going against Moses, the very mouthpiece of Jehovah, is going against Jehovah and deserving of death punishment. 
Indeed, Jesus is not and cannot be Jehovah incarnate. Proof number eight. Moses has seen Jehovah face to face. But Jesus said, no one has seen Abba other than his son. Even as no one else knows the son except Abba. Meaning, even Jehovah does not know Jesus, neither does he also know Abba. Therefore, Jesus is not and cannot be Jehovah incarnate. Proof number nine. Jesus has a father. And according to him, no one knows his father except himself. The Jews know who their father is, and their father is Jehovah. It means Jesus and the Jews are not talking of the same God. Therefore, when Jesus said he was sent by his father, he is referring to Abba, who is not Jehovah, which means it is Abba who sent him, not Jehovah. Indeed, Jesus is not and cannot be Jehovah incarnate. Proof number 10. Jesus has never said at any single time that he is God. He is ever consistent in his pronouncements that he is the Son of God. And because he is the Son of God, if Jesus were Jehovah, Jehovah then would be the Son of Abba. That cannot be. Jehovah has no father, neither does he have a son. Indeed, Jesus is not and cannot be Jehovah in the flesh. Proof number 11. Jehovah is God, not a man. It is unthinkable for Jehovah to incarnate himself as man, much less identify himself as son of man as Jesus often calls himself. Therefore, Jesus is not and cannot be Jehovah incarnate. Proof number 12. If Jesus were Jehovah incarnate, there will be two gods then, while Jehovah was on earth. Who were these two gods? One was Abba, the one Jesus said sent him, and the other was Jehovah, the one who was, who was on earth in the flesh. But there ought to be only one God and not two at any given time, yes? Therefore, Jesus is not and cannot be Jehovah incarnate.
Proof number 13. Jesus is in perfect oneness with Abba. So perfectly one that he was mistaken by the Jews to be claiming to be God and for which he was crucified. On the other hand, the character of Jehovah in the Old Testament is totally different from the character of Abba. Therefore, Jesus can never be in oneness with Jehovah. Indeed, Jesus is not and cannot be Jehovah in the flesh. Proof number 14. Jesus prays to his Father that he be glorified in his presence with the glory he had with him before the world began. If Jesus were Jehovah, why would he yet pray like that? Firstly, Jehovah would not pray to a father. He has no father. He is the father. <clears throat> Secondly, he would not pray to be glorified in the presence of another God. He is the God. Thirdly, he would not pray to be glorified. He is the glorified. Therefore, Jesus is not and cannot be Jehovah incarnate. Proof number 15. Jehovah, being God for the Jews and Israel alone, treated the Jews like a treasured possession to the discrimination of those who are non-Jews. In contrast, Abba singles out no particular race or nation or nation whom he will love the most. Like the sun that rises on the evil and the good, he treats everyone fairly and justly, regardless of the color of anyone's skin, beliefs, and heart. It was for the love of the world not for the love of Israel alone, that he sent his son Jesus to bring fullness of life to the world. Therefore, Jesus is not and cannot be Jehovah incarnate. <clears throat> Proof number 16. Jehovah is an unforgiving and avenging God. In contrast, Jesus is ever fair and just. Indeed, Jesus is not and cannot be Jehovah in the flesh. Proof number 17. Jehovah is a God of wrath and violence will easily resort to killing and even annihilation when disobeyed. In contrast, Jesus is a man of love, justice, and mercy who will never resort to any kind of violence, let alone annihilation. Indeed, Jesus is not and cannot be Jehovah. Incarnate. Proof number 18. Jehovah is a despot. He uses motivation by fear in instilling obedience to all his commands. In contrast, Jesus is ever humane and just. He uses motivation by love in demanding obedience to his teachings and commands. 
Indeed, Jesus is not and cannot be Jehovah incarnate. Proof number 19. Jehovah is changeable mind while Jesus is ever firm in his beliefs and commands. Therefore, Jesus is not and cannot be Jehovah incarnate. Roof number 20. Some of Jehovah's laws and commandments do not conform to the good dictates of nature that when obeyed may lead to destruction, not life. It takes the coming of Jesus to make them conform to life. Indeed, Jesus is not and cannot be Jehovah in the flesh. Proof number 21. Jehovah seeks to call and protect only the righteous among the Israelites as he tries to remove the wicked among them, especially those who do not belong to his people. In contrast, Jesus seeks not to call the righteous, but the sinners and the suffering people of the world. Indeed, Jesus is not and cannot be Jehovah incarnate. Proof number 22. Jehovah promised the Jews an inheritance of land in Israel if they obey all his commandments. In contrast, Jesus promised the world an inheritance of eternal life if they will follow him in his mission. Indeed, Jesus is not and cannot be Jehovah incarnate. Proof number 23. Jehovah made a covenant of love with Abraham and Moses that would entail the killing of millions of non-Israelites occupying the land that happened to be not theirs. In contrast, Jesus made a covenant of love with his 12 apostles which would entail the laying down of his own life for many, for the, for the forgiveness of sins. Jesus is not and cannot be Jehovah in the flesh. Proof number 24. Jehovah made women some kind of species far lower than men. He made women practically slaves to their husbands. In contrast, Jesus does not discriminate against the female sex, nor does he relegate women to a position of slaves to men. Jesus is not and cannot be Jehovah incarnate. Proof number 25. Jehovah desires sacrifices and offerings as atonement for sins committed. In contrast, Jesus desires mercy, not sacrifice for sinners. Indeed, Jehovah is not and cannot be Jehovah incarnate. Proof number 26. Jehovah 
seeks death by stoning for a rebellious son to serve as warning to all. In contrast, Jesus seeks the repentance of a rebellious son. Jesus cannot be Jehovah incarnate. <clears throat> Proof number 27. Jesus takes no ownership of any of the laws <clears throat> given by Jehovah through Moses. He refers to the laws of, Mo of Jehovah as the law, your law, their law, this law, and the law of Moses, but never as my father's law, or my law, or our law. Furthermore, never does Jesus ever address Jehovah as my father, but rather your father. Jesus cannot be Jehovah incarnate. Roof, number 28. To Jehovah, any man who has sinned is doomed to be punished. He will even harden the sinner's heart to give him no room to repent and be spared from the impending punishment. In contrast to Jesus, there is no such thing as already too late to repent and be saved. Jesus cannot be Jehovah incarnate. Proof number 29. When Jehovah talks of love your neighbor, his composition of neighbor is largely confined within the racial and religious circle of Israel. In contrast, when Jesus talks of love your neighbor, the composition of his neighbor is universal. No discrimination as to the color of one's faith, skin, sex, social status, ethnicity, age, and heart. Jesus cannot be Jehovah in the flesh. Proof number 30. Jehovah condones the practice of polygamy by his people. In contrast, Jesus does not approve of the practice of polygamy. Jesus cannot be Jehovah incarnate. Proof number 31. To Jehovah, the vineyard is Israel, and the people of Judah are the vine. In contrast to Jesus, the vineyard is the kingdom of God on earth, and the true vine is Jesus. Jesus cannot be Jehovah in the flesh. Proof number 32. Jehovah is quick to anger, unforgiving of rebellion, merciless, unholy, unjust, and unkind. In contrast, Jesus is the opposite of all of Jehovah's unpleasant attributes. Jesus cannot be Jehovah incarnate. Proof number 33. Jehovah seeks the destruction of enemies. In contrast, Jesus seeks love even for enemies. Jesus cannot be Jehovah in the flesh. Proof number 34. 
believers of Jesus is Jehovah said that the original Hebrew name of Jesus is Yehoshua or Joshua in English, which means Jehovah is salvation, proving to all that Jesus is Jehovah incarnate. But how many people are there in the world today that have names of Jesus and Joshua? Does it mean they are also Jehovah incarnate? Jesus is a savior, not because of the meaning of his name, more than he really proved himself to be the savior. Had Jesus carried another name with no meaning at all, he would yet remain the Savior. Jesus is not and cannot be Jehovah in the flesh. Proof number 35. Believers of Jesus' is Jehovah said that since Jehovah is the promulgator of the Sabbath, when Jesus redefines the meaning of the Sabbath, he is identifying himself as Jehovah proving to all that Jesus is Jehovah incarnate. But why will Jehovah still wait for Jesus' coming before he redefines the meaning of the Sabbath? Moreover, by redefining it, won't it just confuse his people? Indeed, Jesus is not and cannot be Jehovah in the flesh. Proof number 36. Believers of Jesus is Jehovah said that since Jehovah is the sole creator of, creator, creator of the natural world, when Jesus stops the storm, he is identifying himself as Jehovah proving to all that Jesus is Jehovah in the flesh. The truth is, Jesus really has the innate power over the natural world since, since he is the co-creator of Abba. Therefore, Jesus is not and cannot be Jehovah in the flesh. Proof number 37. Believers of Jesus is Jehovah said that since Jehovah alone can tread on water, when Jesus walks on water, he is presenting himself as Jehovah, proving to all that Jesus, that Jesus is Jehovah incarnate. But if Jesus can create the world. What is so stunning about his being able to work on water, to walk on water? Therefore, Jesus is not and cannot be Jehovah in the flesh. Proof number 38. Believers of Jesus is Jehovah said that each time Jesus identifies himself as I am he, he is clearly making it known to the world that he is Jehovah. Since I am he is the name of Jehovah in the Old Testament, proving to all that Jesus is Jehovah incarnate. However, never did Jesus in the entire gospel introduce himself as God other than Son of God or Son of Man. In other words, Jesus I am He ought to mean I am He, the Son of God not I am he, the God, 
lest we condemn him as an impostor or a liar. If you believe Jesus is an impostor or a liar, then Jesus is indeed Jehovah incarnate. But if you believe, Jesus can never be an impostor or a liar, then Jesus is not and cannot be Jehovah incarnate. Proof number 39. Believers of Jesus' is Jehovah said that since only Jehovah has the power to forgive sins, whenever Jesus forgives sins, he is identifying himself as Jehovah, proving to all that Jesus is Jehovah incarnate. But Jesus was sent by Abba, the one true God, with an authorized power to forgive. Therefore, Jesus is not and cannot be Jehovah in the flesh. Proof number 40. Believers of Jesus is Jehovah said that since Jehovah is the judge at the last day, when Jesus says he will judge the living and the dead at the last day, he is identifying himself as Jehovah, proving to all that Jesus is Jehovah in the flesh. But all judgment has been entrusted to him by Abba, the one true God. Therefore, Jesus is not and cannot be Jehovah in the flesh. Proof number 41. Believers of Jesus is Jehovah said, that since Jehovah is the only God to be worshipped, when Jesus allows himself to be worshipped, he is identifying himself as Jehovah, proving to all that Jesus is Jehovah in the flesh. But Jesus was the Son of God, worthy of worship, by anyone. Jesus cannot be Jehovah in the flesh. Proof number 42. Believers of Jesus is Jehovah said that since Jehovah will search for those who are lost. When Jesus says he comes to seek and save the lost, he is clearly identifying himself as Jehovah, proving to all that Jesus is Jehovah in the flesh. But to save the lost is just one of the several missions that Jesus was sent for. In fact, it is the duty of everyone in the world as children of God to save anyone who is lost. Jesus cannot be Jehovah in the flesh. Proof number 43. Believers of Jesus is Jehovah said that in John 1, 1 to 3, which says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The author directly presented Jesus as God, who is Jehovah, clearly proving 
that Jesus is Jehovah incarnate. But if you carefully analyze John 1, 1 to 3, there will appear to be two gods. Word is two gods. The first god is the word, who is Jesus. And the second god is the one with the word, who is the father. But there ought to be only one god. Yes. However, if we use the word divine instead of God in the phrase and the word was God, the whole John 1, 1 to 3 will now read us. In the beginning was the word and the word was, was with God and the word was divine. There now appears only one God, yes? John the author you will have to be consistent in describing Jesus as the Son of God. He cannot in one instance quote Jesus saying, I am the Son of God. And then in the next instance, he will describe Jesus in his own words as he is God. It is the intent of John the author to mean Jesus is divine in his introduction not Jesus is God. Blame the translation, not John. With that, Jesus is not and cannot be Jehovah incarnate. Proof number 44. Believers of Jesus is Jehovah said, that since Jehovah is the light, when Jesus says he is the light, he is equating himself with Jehovah, proving to all that Jesus is Jehovah incarnate. But the light of Jehovah is entirely different from the light of Jesus. There are two lights of Jehovah. In the Old Testament, the light of Jehovah in the Torah, the first five books of the Old Testament, and the light of Jehovah in the prophets. In the Torah, Jehovah is full of destruction. In the prophets, Jehovah is full of life. In other words, Jehovah is inherently evil, but beautified by the prophets. In contrast, the light of Jesus in the gospel is all life, for Jesus is the life. Therefore, Jesus is not and cannot be Jehovah in the flesh. Proof number 45. Believers of Jesus is Jehovah said that since Jehovah is the sole creator of heaven and earth, when Jesus is being described in the book of John as through him, all things were made, he is being presented as Jehovah, proving to all that Jesus is Jehovah incarnate. But in the same book of John, the author also described Jesus as a co-maker of Abba in the creation of the world, clearly implying that the true creator of the world is not Jehovah, but Abba and his son Jesus. Therefore, Jesus is not and cannot be Jehovah incarnate.
Proof number 46. Believers of Jesus is Jehovah said that since Jehovah is the king of the Jews, when Jesus says he is the king of the Jews, he is identifying himself as Jehovah, proving to all that Jesus is Jehovah incarnate. The problem is, listen to this, the problem is, Jehovah was also known to have killed his own people, more than 600,000 of them in the desert for disobedience. Would that mean that it was Jesus being the Jehovah incarnate who had also killed them? Where now is the teaching of Jesus about loving even your enemies? Jesus cannot be Jehovah incarnate. Proof number 47. Believers of Jesus is Jehovah said that since Jehovah is the good shepherd, when Jesus says he is the good shepherd, he is equating himself with Jehovah, proving to all that Jesus is Jehovah incarnate. But Jesus also says, The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. It is not in the character of Jehovah to lay down his life for his people. Rather, it is his people who are expected to lay down their lives for him. Jesus cannot be Jehovah incarnate. Proof number 48. Believers of Jesus is Jehovah said that since Jehovah is the rock, the bridegroom and the sower, when Jesus says he is the rock, the bridegroom and the sower, he is equating himself with Jehovah, proving to all that Jesus is Jehovah incarnate. But Jesus as the rock, the bridegroom, and the sower is entirely different from Jehovah as the rock, the bridegroom, and the sower in the Old Testament. Jehovah is a God of wrath and violence. While Jesus is a divine son who abhors wrath and violence. Indeed, Jesus is not and cannot be Jehovah incarnate. Proof number 49. Believers of Jesus is Jehovah said, that since Jehovah's words endure forever, when Jesus says his words will never pass away, he is identifying himself as Jehovah, proving to all that Jesus is Jehovah incarnate. But the words of Jesus are entirely different from the words of Jehovah. The words of Jesus, a word of God, whereas the words of Jehovah are a word of man. Why are Jehovah's words word of man? He is, so, he is so psychotic in his ways and behavior that even man with all his innate imperfections could never imagine to be doing the evil Jehovah had done to his people and his enemies. There is no one in his right mind could ever think that Jehovah is God 
other than he is but just a creation of a man. And that man is no other than Moses, the man who wrote the Torah. God is life, not destruction. Only Abba perfectly fits the exact description of a God. Jesus cannot be Jehovah in the flesh. Last proof, number 15. Believers of Jesus is Jehovah regarded Abba to be the same person as Jehovah. Therefore, in all instances where Jesus equates himself with Abba, he is clearly presenting himself as Jehovah. But Abba and Jehovah cannot happen to be the one, to be one and the same person. They are diametrically opposite each other in their teachings, character, and mindset. One is unforgiving, murderous, and imperfect. The other one is forgiving, life-giving, and perfect. It is like making God and Satan one and the same person. It just cannot be. Jesus cannot be Jehovah incarnate. All said, Is Jesus Yahweh, whom others also call Jehovah? Or is Jesus not Yahweh or Jehovah? When I presented all the proofs for Jesus is Jehovah, in the name of fairness, I exhausted all the possible arguments forwarded by the believers of Jesus is Jehovah incarnate. God knows I left no stone unturned. In the same manner, when I presented all the proofs for Jesus is not Jehovah, also in the name of fairness, I exhausted all the possible arguments I could gather in the Bible to prove that Jesus is not Jehovah, even to the point of disproving each and every argument forwarded by the other side that Jesus is Jehovah. Based on the proofs from each side, the only conclusion that can be made is Jesus is not Yahweh. And can never ever be Yahweh, whom others also call Jehovah. Amen. If you want to see a new light, a light you have never seen before. May I invite you to subscribe to this channel and walk with Jesus all the way to making his mission of life happen in our world. We owe it to our children and the children of our children for all the generations to come, the making of our world a most beautiful and happy place for everyone especially the poor and the oppressed among us, whom Jesus calls the least of his brothers and sisters. In the name of God, 
through his only son, Jesus. I wholeheartedly thank you for viewing this video presentation. May the Spirit of God be always with you, that you may always be guided by the one and only truth, who is our Father in heaven, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.